Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's go and see how you can build and test a simple agent. So this is the first video that I'm creating in the free edition about these AI agents in Databricks. So this will be the simple uh, AI agent that we will be creating with one tool into it. So you can see what I'm going to create from this uh, thing also. And we will be using MLflow to log uh, the traces um, of the LLM calls that we are uh, doing here. But before continuing into today's topic, if you are new to the channel, I create videos related to Databricks, AI and all sorts of things. So just visit the channel if you find it interesting, uh, please consider subscribing. And also just to mention that about related to Databricks, I have this one called Databricks uh, video where I create random, uh, random videos. And there is this 30 days of Databricks where I have each day different topics you can just take help from there also and the series that I am continuing now in this free edition is this free edition uh, playlist of course this is the video number 17 so just to watch the previous video so you get to see the idea about the UI and so on because I am not going to touch on those uh, topics in this video having said that now let's get directly into today's uh, topic so yeah this is what we are going to use and we are going to use the databricks openai sdk to query the llm input right so one thing to mention you if you work in databricks i hope you know already if you have worked there are some packages which are already being installed right to list all those you can just write this peep uh, list and it will list all the uh, packages that are being installed so you can just go through the list and if there is not those packages that are being installed then you can install of course right just giving you understanding because sometimes you might want to install something which is already there so that is one thing and now in this case we want to use mlflow only and databricks uh, openai and databricks agents which we want to install so i'm just installing this by the way i'm pressing shift and enter or you can just do control enter also uh, or you can just click uh, this run cell whatever you want to do it you can see now it is already being installed and to install of course i have already connected this uh, serverless compute here if I click here, you can see it is connected to the serverless compute that is being provided by Databricks in the in the free edition. And as it is mentioned here also, you need to restart this Python or you can just uh, copy this to use the updated packages. So that is what I'm doing here, just taking uh, the code uh, that is being provided or the command that is being provided that's it so now let's check before proceeding that our package is being installed because here i'm using q q q q meaning that i don't want the output of this shell to be displayed in the notebook so this is the quite right you can use one two three four wow, how many numbers of quite you want to do it based on that something will be shown if you want to hide everything this is just a simple behavior that we can use so let's say that i want to see what is the version of the databricks agents i'm using right it is using version 1.8.2 so this is the way in some cases you might have some problem uh, with running this I don't know when you will be watching this video and just to make sure if it works in my place and if it does not work in your case you can just check uh, the packages uh, that is being installed here that's a simple way how can how you can uh, make the same version of packages so yeah now that is done and I have this simple uh, warning suppression command here so that uh, it will suppress the warning so we will not see any sorts of warning so first thing First, let's see how we can pick the first LLM API available in your Databricks workspace. So what I am saying here is although this is the free version of Databricks, Databricks provides us some serving endpoints uh, where we can use that for these uh, testing purposes or creating some, uh, um, some um, agents or having LLM calls uh, playing in the playground and something like this. I have created video already about the playlist apps and so on. Please watch my playlist for those. But just want to show you this one. So this is the sorbing, right? So here I'm saying that, okay, look for this uh, this uh, sorbing endpoint. If you kind of can't find that, look for the next one. So this should be one of that should be in your uh, in your list, meaning that in the free edition. So here you can see there are many ways. There is no cloud in this case, but we have these 
data bricks i think this is the one llama not this one so this is the meta llama 3.370 dB uh, in stock so that is what uh, we are using uh, in this case so that is what i am mentioning here so if i just run this one now and okay this is uh, running here and if i now run this and if i run this llm in point name it will show me which in point i'm using because uh, the cloud 3.7 is not available so it is using the next one so that's it so the first thing now we have something to test uh, the llm in point so now let's see what how we can test that in point with some query so the next one is let's first uh, do a simple llm call right by the way i am providing this uh, i will provide the link of the github where i will be updating this code so you can just follow from there if you if you are following this uh, this video so you can just run the sales uh, how i am doing here first thing first we need to install or import uh, the packages mlflow database stk we are importing or place workspace client and now this is the really interesting part here with just one command mlflow.openai.autolog every traces that we are going to have with this uh, LLM will be uh, available for us to view. So that means we can have the traces. Uh, traces meaning that each LLM calls, how many time it took, how many tokens, uh, and all sorts of things. And the good part in Databricks, uh, because MLflow works really well, well with the Databricks, you can already see the UI being pop up uh, when we run the command. But I will show you later how you can see that from the experiments also. But yeah, this is the thing. Now we get an OpenAI client uh, configured. Uh, so that's it from here. Uh, this is the prompt, meaning the query that I'm going to ask. And here I'm just asking it. So I'm just going to run this, right? So if I run this, you can see it will take some couple of seconds. Okay, now it's already there. And this is the whole response of this particular LLM call. And if you see down here, this is the ML flow trace UI being shown. So meaning that, as I said you before also, with the help of ML flow, you can see uh, visually uh, all the traces. So token counts, latency, uh, and so on. And you can see also the user and the messages. And as I said, you we are going to use the tool, but in this case so far, we haven't used the tool. So it is not showing in the traces, but when we start using it, uh, it will it will just pop up there. Okay, so now this is the whole output. Now it's up to you how you want to extract the information from this particular output, depending upon the downstream task that you are planning to do. Because here the answer is in the content, right? In the message, in the content, you can see the capital of Nepal is Kathmandu. The answer is there. But now this is the whole response coming. And I haven't even stored in any variable. So what I will be doing next is I'm storing it in a variable. I will run this one. Okay, when I run this, again, the MLflow UI kicks in because it is uh, logging in automatically. And now if I just print this response, it will be the same response as I showed you before. But now the thing is we can extract the information based on our need. For example, if you just want to have the ID, you can say response ID because it's here. Sometimes you might need that, right? And now if you want to just have the content, I'm just showing you this because uh, in many videos, people just use this without explaining and it might take some time for you if you are new, uh, hard time to understand these things. But uh, the response, you can see this is the response. This is the choice. You can see inside it, there is this uh, choice. Inside the choice, we are taking the first index. And inside the index, there is this message. We are taking the message dot. Inside the message, we have the content. So that is how we can extract. So similarly, if you want to extract some other things, for example, if you want to extract the model and so on, you can do, uh, do the same kind of thing. So if I just run this, it will show me the answer. So that is a simple LLM call. What next? Now let's wrap that into a function because once we do some testing, we want to wrap it in a function. So in, in later, I can have a tool call uh, being also added to that function and create an agent and we have an agent uh, running, right? So now let's wrap it in a function. So it's just a run LLM is a function. I'm passing the prompt and nothing more. I'm just wrapping all those things with some uh, things here and there uh, just to make it better. So I'm just running this. So this is the run uh, LLM. Also, there is this comment. So if you want to read uh, what it is doing, it's all there. And now here I'm just uh, asking it to provide. By the way, I'm 
pressing shift enter just to run it you can run control enter or you can directly click the uh, click this button here right so here you can see assistant is uh, so Kathmandu so it says what is the capital of Nepal it's just saying Kathmandu right that is the answer and now if you see here also the answer is being uh, shown here if you want it to be more descriptive you can write in the prompt to be more descriptive and so on and it will provide you the answer but here it's what is the capital Kathmandu right that's it and now the token count is 22 latency is 0 0.35 seconds so now we know how to do the LLM call how to find the available endpoint in the serving serving endpoint and how to create a function and call it so next let's create a, a tool and add the tool so for that uh, we are going to use this Databricks OpenAI UC function toolkit and we have this Databricks uh, function client right so we are going to use this and this auto log that is already there so this one is already uh, there and now I have this client Databricks function uh, client there is built-in tool here is the tool and this is the function Python EXEC okay before continuing the, the question that what you might be thinking where did I get this inbuilt function right for that what I will do I will click this catalog here you don't need to go outside of this UI just click this one it opens the new UI here and now if you go inside system so it says here system.ai so I think I don't need to explain you the unity catalog 3 hierarchy but you can see this is the system here if you go inside the system there is AI if you go inside AI this is the schema and inside it there is functions and models and so on so there are different models these are the models already being installed there and now this is the function so inside the function we have this Python uh, EXEC so this is what uh, we are using it here right so yeah that is it and now we are creating a function called the tool we need to call the tool and we are passing that as a built-in tool so we are having this call tool right so now we are just creating this call tool right and now the run agent we have the function and inside here you can see I have the tools this is the built-in uh, tools so if you go up here this is the built-in tools that uh, that we are we are using so now if I go down here it says message the tool calls and there is this call tool and it's from call dot function dot name uh, JSON loops everything so this is the now the modifying what kind of output you want to have but you get the idea we have a agent which has a LLM inside it uh, if you ask the question not related to the tool it will use just the LLM without the tools but if we ask the question related to the tools uh, it will just call the LLM of course and then it will decide okay I need to run the tool agent will decide okay there is a tool need here it will call the tool so that is how we enhance the uh, capability of the agent adding the tools right whatever complex the system might be uh, when you create an agent if it is not a multi-agent inside the agent there will be one LLM of course you need that and you can add many uh, many tools to make the uh, agent more robust so that is how we do it so now what I can do is I can just run this uh, shell here so once this is there I can now ask the question okay what is the best place to visit in Kathmandu right I'm just going to run this let me close this to make it bigger so now it is going to go through that in this case we don't need any LLM uh, any tool call so it will not do any tool calls so you can see it says okay I can go inside here it's okay Nepal has a diverse range of attraction to offer and it is saying okay Everest Base Camp, Kathmandu Valley, Pokhara, Chiton, Lumini and so on so these are the places to visit in Nepal so that's great and also there is this ML flow trace UI where you can see from here so now next question let's ask where it needs to run the tool right here I'm saying what is the square root of 9 and if I just click this now it should go into the uh, tool call uh, just to show you here in the UI it says there is a tool but it is not using the tool right but if you go down here now the answer is 3 right and if you go down here there is a tool and it says I call the tool and it is calling the tool import math and it is doing the uh, mathematical calculations to get us the answer so that is how it is being uh, shown here so before going into what uh, next I want to show you like all the experiments it was there it can be viewed from this experiments tab 
For example, here you can see this is the first AI agent YouTube. That is the name of the notebook that it tracks. So yeah, this is the question I asked 40 seconds, one minute ago. So you can see this is the same uh, looking UI that uh, we saw in the notebook itself. And it is here for you to, to explore. This is the good way of uh, looking into the uh, traces. So you can just go here and see all the things which are available in this, in this case. You can also go JSON or default, uh, whatever uh, you want to do. So now, the what we can do next, right? So this is, we build the agent and we test the agent. But the next thing is, we can log the agent and then we can deploy the agent and we can uh, have the deployed version of the agent into the AI playground or you can create a custom applications and so on. I have already created a video how you can use the AI playground here, how you can create a custom app and so on. But if you want me to create these follow-up steps also in the next video, please let me know in the comment section. I will create a next video if most of you want me to do that. Else, I will provide you the documentation link here. It says getting started with uh, Databricks. So here there is all the steps mentioned, but the app creation is not there. But I hope if you watch my app creation video, you can hook that uh, into it. But just to show you how it looks like. Uh, so I have already created one app here uh, and I'm hooking that already available solving in point. For example, if I go to the solving, here you can see there is this agents workspace default quick start agent which I have created following the steps that I just mentioned you and that is the agent uh, right and then here it is showing uh, the place workspace default where it is being stored the model right because the agent has the model in, inside it and I will be using the app to uh, to just point to this agent for example if I go to the compute in the apps i have one app running here already i will just say open app that app uh, is this one i'm just using the default uh, default uh, chat template here and here i can just say what is the capital of nepal uh, and then i can just send so meaning that this is using uh, that particular agent that i deployed uh, in the databricks so you can see how you can do this and in the future uh, if you want I can create the video also that you can have a genie space and the agent running there and you can hook that into the application so it will be the simple application that will be running and under the hood it is powered by the genie space so you can have the questions related to your data which is in the Databricks. So that's the beauty of apps right we create the applications and under the hood there will be some agents or llms whatever it is but we want to have the answer like this you can see what is the capital of nepal the capital of nepal is Kathmandu. you can even ask the square root for example i can say uh, square root of 25 yeah it will just go into this okay it says call back here the server did not respond Okay, maybe some some issue there but it is still still running here but the good part when this is running what I want to show you is if I go back here so let me open this in a new tab here but then I will go to this uh, UI I will go to the experiments just to show you because uh, each of the call are being recorded into the ml flow traces so this uh, first ai agent youtube was the one that i just showed you in the notebook but this one is different notebook so it will be build your first ai agent so this is the different notebook i was using to deploy that so now here you can see i'm asking what is the capital of nepal 52 seconds ago i'm asking 38 seconds it says square root of 25 and you can see here it is going inside it and it is doing these mathematical calculations and so on so here it says no span with type retrieval and if i go back here uh, so you see square root of 25 is still running and maybe it says there was some issue here but because of that it is not showing the answer here but you get the point how you can create the applications on top of the uh, agent so let me know in the comment section if you want me to create that video also i can create if not, now I hope you can create a simple agent in Databricks. I will be creating more AI related uh, videos because uh, Databricks has done really good, good uh, development in the field of AI and agents and multi-agents and so on. So yeah, I hope you find the video helpful. Yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.